Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Soulful Hunter podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Mack. Through this podcast, I'm on a mission to transform lives through primal adventure and to spread my mission of mentorship is conservation. This podcast is powered by Washington Backcountry, a resource for all hunters, both new and old. To find out more about Washington Backcountry, go to wabackcountry.com or search for Washington Backcountry on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. The Soulful Hunter podcast is also proudly presented by TNK Hunting Gear. If you haven't heard about TNK, then it's about time you do. I've been using TNK gear out in the field and on hunts and have fallen in love with their stuff. TNK is veteran owned and 100% made in America using only American made products. All their gear is covered under a lifetime warranty with no questions asked. If it breaks or fails, they will fix it or replace it for free. TNK is your resource for bino harnesses, bow slings, and a lot more amazing gear. For more information about TNK hunting gear, go to tnkhunting.com. Or search for them on Facebook and Instagram. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Freedom on and stay soulful. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Soulful Hunter podcast. Tonight I got a wonderful episode for all of you. And I am joined by a good friend of mine who I have met through social media and then had the opportunity to build a relationship with him and his wife and just nurtured it. And it's so much fun having him on this podcast because when I launched my website, wabackcountry.com man three years ago i think it was he was one of the first guest writers and wrote an article for washington backcountry and tonight i'm joined by the wonderful and amazing kyle camp of valley to peak nutrition out of boise idaho and somebody who i hold tremendous respect for and I, I look at him as a brother and has so much wisdom and guidance and just everything that he does he is a man of integrity, of a man of honor, um, and somebody who lives his life with intention and purpose. And so this episode, I guarantee, is just going to be a golden one and something I can't wait to share with all of you guys. So, Kyle, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Holy smokes, man. I've never had an introduction like that. I feel like I was at my funeral. It was the best thing I've ever heard. You talked me up way too much, but I appreciate it. And I, uh, I appreciate being here. It's been awesome to be a friend of yours for three years and watch, um, WA backcountry grow as it has, and you be as diligent as you have in growing it. So truly my honor to be on here tonight. I appreciate you having me. Oh, I love it. Well, you are someone who is an inspiration. You've lived the life You've realized what it is out of life that you do and do not want. And that is something that I don't think many people in this world reflect upon themselves as much as they should. And I don't use the word should very often. I'm not a fan of it. I don't believe in shooting on people. Um, I am a believer in, in identifying the needs and the values in, in lives and, and working from there. So, Tell, give the listeners a little background on who you are, what is Valley to Peak Nutrition, and then what led you to where you are today? Yeah, that's a great question. That's a really loaded one because, you know, who I am now, um, which, you know, is I'm a pretty average guy, but some of the stuff that I've learned and just the value of being sort of self-disciplined in, in certain areas of my life was not something that I was born with. It was something that, um, I think I just learned over the years, but, um, and, and I don't mean that to sound arrogant. I, I mean that to sound like hopeful for people who maybe are trying to be more disciplined in their life and feel like they just don't have that piece of it. It's something that can be, um, it can be learned. It's not anything I was born with. So yeah, I was born in the Midwest. No, um, you know, no, long, I'm assuming a large portion of your listenership is something related to hunting or mountain something or another uh did not grow up doing any of that grew up in indiana um single uh, parents were divorced and um overweight as a kid weighed 270 pounds at my heaviest heaviest weight and never really knew anything about nutrition at all and um, you know, one day I woke up Christmas, it was Christmas morning, I was 21 years old, started having chest pains and knew that I had no idea about anything medically related, but knew that that probably wasn't a good sign. So young in life, so started making, making some pretty small changes in my diet and, uh, began exercising and noticed the weight coming down slow and 
got very interested in learning about what was happening behind the scenes, what was happening in my body. And um, so I enrolled in a college course. Uh, fast forward several years later, live in, live in Boise, Idaho. I'm a registered dietitian uh, and also run a company called Valley to Peak Nutrition, which is aimed at people um, performing optimally in the mountains or preparing to come to the mountains. So that ranges from anything from guys running ultras to um, guys doing extended, you know, sheep hunts in the, the wilderness or in Alaska or doing, you know, multi-day long distance hikes, et cetera. So preparing them and um, on how to fuel their bodies well and uh, to do well whenever they go out and do the things they love. I love it. And Valley to Peak Nutrition is making an impact in this world and you have grown it. I mean, when, <clears throat> when we connected, I think now social media is not necessarily the measure of a man. However, <laughs> it's a, it is a measure of some sort of reach. And when I connected with you, I think you were maybe in like the 200, 300 followers. You've grown since then. You've been on multiple podcasts. And that is something that you, I would imagine you find a lot of fulfillment in is, is supporting others on their journey. Oh, man, it's the, it's the best piece of it all. I mean, you know, you, I never anticipated valley to peak growing the way that it has and i and i mean this when i say this i truly owe that to guys like you and the guys over at exo and uh, chad rikers over at backcountry rookies just all of these guys who have been so gracious to have me on as a guest it's the way that you know valley to peak the the, the account and the company as a whole has grown and the way that it has it never and i fully believe this and know this it never would have experienced that type of growth or exposure if, if those guys hadn't had me on so i'm just forever indebted to guys like you and the exo guys um i feel a tremendous um amount of gratitude that people invite me into something so sacred like weight loss and um really deep things like you know weight Weight gain, weight loss, preparing for the mountains, doing well in the mountains, you know, even athletes. That's a pretty that's a pretty personal thing to a lot of people. And so for people to invite you into that, uh, to help them or to make recommendations on how they might be able to do it better, I take that really serious. So one of the coolest pieces has been being able to talk to countless people that I never would have been able to talk to before and um, I just, I love it, man. I, I genuinely love being able to connect with people, um, either professionally and, and working with them or like this sort of more informally and developing friendships and relationships, you and your wife and boys came and whenever they swung through Boise, we all went out to dinner and just stuff like that, that, you know, I never would have had the opportunity to do had it not been for that. So yeah, man, I'm just, I'm humbled by it. I really am. Oh, it's so cool. So <clears throat> I'm also honored just to like be in community with you. You are listeners. If you do not know who Kyle Camp is of Valley to Peak Nutrition, look him up. And I will tell you right now that nutrition and healthy lifestyle habits are one of the most <laughs> difficult things to get under control or to have some sort of grasp on. You know, obviously there's people diet all the time and the yo-yo back and forth, but to really create a lifestyle change, something that is beneficial, not just for you, but your family and your, and the way you live your life. I mean, I, 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 I'm a health teacher. I'm starting a nutrition unit this week in <laughs> my second quarter of uh, <laughs> my, my semester. We're diving into nutrition, and I talk to these kids, and they have no clue. Like, we're talking to 14-year-old eighth graders. And I'm like, nutrition is, is like two different things because you have the nutrition that is fuel for your body that is just gasoline. Like, you need calories to get going, but then you also need to worry about the vitamins, minerals, nutrients, and everything else that comes along with living a healthy lifestyle. You know, because I could live off of ice cream all day long, but I wouldn't be living the most fulfilling life <laughs> off of the ice cream. And these kids, they look at me and, and 
you know, all you podcast listeners out there, you can't see me, but I'm looking cross-eyed right now because they're like, duh, I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Mac. You're, you're not making sense. And so it's really inspiring to talk with someone who's lived the life, who has, and it's sad to say that you had to go so far to one extreme to then realize it. Because I always talk to my students, it's very easy to maintain. It's very hard to recover. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, not to make this a nutrition podcast because there's other topics that we're going to get into, but I, what, mm-hmm. what do you have to say to people who are struggling with their weight, struggling with their nutrition habits, um, the choices that they make? What is the, the, the first couple things that you would be like, this is where you need to stake your flag and, and hold your ground? Yeah, for sure. That's a great question. So I think number one, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is, you know, nutrition is 80% behavior based. It is not even remotely close to as complex as a lot of Facebook articles and your buddies have made it out to see. Now, it, it is complex at the level that you study it at in college if you're going to have a profession like mine. I mean, it's important for someone in my job to know what happens at the cellular level and to know what all of these different terms are and how it affects the body. And, you know, I do some work for the hospital. And so when someone's on life support in the ICU and I'm reading their lab values, I need to know what to do with that. But for the, for the average person, 98% of the population, nutrition is way more basic than what a lot of these articles have made it out to be. It's a series of very sensible steps done over and over and over again with consistency that ultimately leads um, to a better lifestyle. Choosing the veggies more often than not, foregoing the extra large fries, not drinking a ton of your calories from soda, just really sensible stuff that you probably already know need to change done with consistency. Um, I, there's, you know, there's basically four principles that I walk clients through that for a successful nutrition program. Number one, there needs to be some sort of, some sort of a a plan. You got to have some type of a plan that you're aiming for. Otherwise you're just sort of wildly swinging in the air. Number two, you've got to have some way to track what you're doing. You got to have some sort of a baseline for portion measurements. And number four, the place that people lose themselves the most often is you've got to be consistent with those things oh, hold on did you just go from one two to four did you miss three <laughs> i might have but that's uh <laughs> so it's develop develop a plan tracking. track what you what you do you got to have a baseline for your portions so some sort of a measurement and then you got to be consistent this idea that you've got to eat ketogenic or you've got to eat um, paleo, or you've got to eat, insert some other, you know, really popular methodology of eating to be successful at weight loss. The idea that you've got to sign up, the idea that you've got to sign up for something that you hate to be successful is a complete fallacy. You can include anything you want in a diet in the proper portion and still lose weight. Dude, or if you if you want to add on muscle or if you want to talk about performance, then you change some of those wordings. But the general idea is the same. Um, you don't need to be the guy at the at the table eating steamed broccoli while the rest of the family has lasagna. You can have lasagna. You just need to learn what the amount is for your body that's fuel. Yeah. And you hit the nail on the head, too, with those students, the micronutrients, the vitamins and the minerals. A lot of times, guys in particular in that do the type of things that we enjoy doing. They don't care about the veggies, right? They underplay them. But one of the biggest misconceptions about those is the vitamins and minerals cause the body to use the larger nutrients, the the carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, cause the body to use those at the best efficiency possible. So you are missing a big time boost in your nutrition if you're foregoing those things. So, yeah, man, I think you're the the perfect guy to teach that to those students because (laughs) because you hit the nail on the head in recognizing that 
yeah, you could survive on ice cream, but if you're talking about optimal optimal fuel, you're talking about feeling the best that you can every day, and you're talking about longevity and quality of life, what you eat matters. Yep, if you are what you eat, right? Yeah, so, exactly. You know, it's really interesting, which I'm, I'm learning and I just experienced tonight, was how you prepare your food also can determine how you enjoy your food and i know a lot of people if if you're like me listeners and you're a comfort eater like you enjoy the comfort of what you eat and how you eat it my wife recently bought a bunch of carrots but sliced them up like if you're to put them in a dehydrator or whatever like super thin it was way more fun snacking on carrots on little thin slices of carrots (laughs) than it was to like whole carrot sticks out or even eat a whole thing and yeah and i think this is just me personally talking remember i do this podcast for myself and then i share it with everyone because it it is just how life goes but for me food needs to be there needs to be some type of like fun aspect to it or some type it's a weird mental hurdle that i have where i don't just eat for sustenance i eat for pleasure i eat for something else that i don't even i can't even put a a thumb on it right now well i don't i don't think it's weird at all man like food is enjoyable on so many levels particularly in our culture right i mean we celebrate with food we everything revolves around food and it's an enjoyable piece of the puzzle so you know for for a person to sign up for some sort of a program that deprives them of that of, of being able to sit down at a table and relive meals that their mom cooked simply because they're on a diet. If it deprives them of that, they need to find a new plan. So, yeah, I don't think it's at all bizarre for you to say you need to be able to enjoy it and it needs to be fun. I think one of the best things that I that came out of me and my own personal weight loss journey was learning to cook. I mean, that was a game changer, learning that food does not have to suck. It does not have to be boiled broccoli, white rice, and chicken breasts every single night for the rest of my life for me to have some success in this. Um, It was a, I mean, that was one of the best, there was a lot of nights I ate burnt stuff, but it caused me to learn, you know, and, and to be able to learn to cook anything I want and still be able to maintain the weight loss or whatever your personal goal is um, without having to be deprived. And ultimately that's the goal to long-term weight loss and maintaining is the more that you can feel like you've not changed anything, the more likely a person is going to be able to stick to something like that. And the reality is, is it's very possible to do. You just have to, you know, a lot of times just education, right? Just learning what that is as opposed to trying to sign up for something that's unrealistic from the get go. Right. And we always talk about on this podcast that knowledge is power. You know, you you gain knowledge to make better and more informed decisions about your life. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're not talking whether things are right or wrong. It is about what and how it affects you and your community and circle. So, well, let's shift gears here real quick because Obviously, you are the nutrition man, and we can talk nutrition forever, but you had an awesome experience in 2019, and you are only growing and continuing that journey, and that is when you moved west and landed in Idaho, you found hunting. I did, yeah. What led you to become a hunter? What, what led you to all of a sudden realizing that that was something that you found fun and enjoyment in or passion or whatever. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question because, you know, you know, I'm a, I know a couple of guys that you've worked with. This is why I just love the whole um, mentorship is conservation. I just love what you do because I am that right. I mean, I didn't go on my first hunt until I was in my thirties and I did I had no one, uh, you know, no fault of my dad's. If I was into it, he would have found a way and he would have figured out how to hunt and he would have taken me. I just didn't, I just didn't show, show any interest in it. When you live in Indiana, um, you know, the idea of hunting, if you're not hunting or if you're an, if you're ignorant is cut off camo sleeves, Walmart and, and beer, right? It's just, (laughs) it's just, it's just this, just this very generalized concept, but 
Yeah, so I didn't grow up doing it at all. And so I had no idea where to begin. But my initial interest in it was I met my wife. And my wife is from uh, Eastern Oregon over near the Wallowa Mountains. And if you've ever been there, then you know immediately just how gorgeous it is. And when I moved to Idaho, I'd been backpacking a few times. So I fell in love with the mountains through that. And I'd already had this passion for being outside and being in the mountains, but had never hunted. So I met my wife from Eastern Oregon, her folks, that's what they live on. I mean, they can and um, they subsist on their their garden from the summer. They hunt and eat elk and venison all winter long. And um, so I went there and I just, you know, the first visit I ever had, I had all of these dishes uh, of elk meat. And so, you know, her, her dad's explaining to me the process of how you hunt and how you harvest your own meals. And so my my passion with eating with eating healthy performance nutrition and the mountains sort of came to this this segue here where it was like you know so you're telling me i can go spend time in the mountains get lean protein for a 39 dollar tag and and be able to enjoy it the whole time i'm out there and he's like yeah you know for for the most part you're right so man i just sort of dove head first in took my hunter's ed that winter it was a terrible snowstorm or a terrible snow season so i i I skied quite a bit that season i learned to ski and and also took my hunter's ed course here at home and i thought okay well now i've got that i'm gonna go ahead and apply for a tag i drew a cow tag here just um in idaho and and uh you know i had zero idea about hunting no but i had no idea who to turn to and i had a buddy who'd just moved here from Colorado and who'd done some elk hunting out there. So he went with me and man, it just, it sort of spiraled out of control from there for my passion for it. And I've uh, just fallen in love with it and have met just a number of spectacular and um, very patient guys who have just been generous to teach me and take me to their, their hunting spots. And I just can't say enough about those guys and how, you know, like being, five or six years into the process now knowing what it takes to agree to take a new hunter with all of his questions with you and just the patience there now makes me so much more grateful for those guys and who I still hunt with um just for 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 agreeing to take that on man it's just um it's awesome and again I, I know I'm sort of being redundant here but that's why I love your mission is because it's all about that. And it's really, it's a steep learning curve as it is, but if you don't have someone agree to take you in the field, you're in for a very long and challenging road. And so that's why I just, I love what you do and trying to find guys agree to take other people into the field and teach them how to hunt. Oh, well, I'm honored. Thank you. That, that means a lot. And it's really nice to hear that. It's also really nice to hear that you have the experience of, going through a process and then recognizing how important it is you know being a father of three children you know you do things for your kids all the time and you try to teach them how to be grateful and how to have gratitude and lead with the attitude of gratitude and then you just stop and look and be like dude am i doing this wrong do do, what's going on why are they not like grasping it and it's a process and life is a process and and it's a journey we're never we're never there we're enjoying the process as we go and so i appreciate that so let's talk a little bit more about your journey so you got into hunting and you went out multiple years it wasn't until this last year where you and your wife had your first child that you also had an opportunity i think you told me you arrowed an elk and yeah. then you followed it up by shooting a deer, your first deer. And like, just talk about the transition of trying to learn how to hunt, getting into hunting and how, how consuming it can go. to Then how having to balance it with having a child and being a good husband and a good father. And then having this other draw of like, oh, but I want to be out in the wild and all this stuff. Yeah. Well, I think first and foremost, the thing that comes to mind is, you know, that pool to always be in the field is definitely there. But before I even met my wife, you know, as I started to become sort of a young man and 
my early 20s, I knew there was nothing on the planet I wanted to be more than a good dad and a good husband. So it's definitely, there's definitely a pool to where I want to be in the field. I want to be hunting and I want to be in the mountains and I want to be out there. But my desire and drive to be a good dad and a husband always wins. So I, I think I'd be somewhat lying if I said that, you know, I've just got this deep struggle to be home and because I don't, I mean, I, if, if they need me, I want to be here. And, um, if I, as much as I love it, I recognize that if I'm always gone away from them, I can't invest that time to be a good dad and a good husband. So there, there is a pool that exists, but that, that desire to be that trumps that pool usually. Um, so my, you know, my transition from going like knowing nothing to arrowing and losing my first bull and uh, to killing my first buck. <clears throat> Man, like I said, it just spiraled out of control the first year in a good way, I feel like. <laughs> uh, but um, the first, you know, the first the first couple of years, Man, I just, looking back, I had no idea what I was doing and thinking about that cow elk tag that I drew the first year and how I hunted them. Jeez Louise, it's no wonder I didn't see any, uh, see any elk, much less shoot one. Uh, so you just, you're, you're sort of, you, you, you know, my father-in-law, he gave me when, when he knew I went through the process of getting my own, my license and drawing a tag, he gave me some of the best advice. He's like, if you don't learn to love the entire process and not kill anything, you are going to hate hunting. If you can learn to enjoy the whole process, then you're going to really, you're going to enjoy it. And, and that's, that's so true, man. You know, like you, you think about training all year, either physically or shooting your bow or sighting in your rifle. And if there's not a piece of you that, if there wasn't a piece of me that learned to just like that, uh, it would have been a really long road. Um, but yeah, man, there were uh, the several, first couple of years, I didn't even see anything much or less get an opportunity to get a shot much. As a matter of fact, I don't even, I didn't even, i I had never filed, fired my rifle at an animal until I shot that buck, uh, that first hunt. I mean, I, I've been on multiple hunts, but I'd never even had the opportunity to fire my rifle until I actually killed my first deer. Wow. Um, wow. That, <laughs> that yeah. is something. Yeah. Yeah. And the first, you know, the first arrow that I slung was at that bull. I hit the bull. I just hit him too far back. He, he bedded and long story short, I ended up losing him. But, um, yeah, man, I mean, all, all along there, and I know this is sort of scattered. I'm just thinking about the whole process of it all. So I apologize for that. But, um, I think looking back, I was thinking about that today because I've actually got a tag in my pocket right now for a late draw hunt here in Idaho, mule deer hunt. And I was just thinking about it all. And man, every, you know, it's, it's hard to recognize this in the moment, but all of the lessons I learned by not shooting something, you know, just simple stuff from like learning what an elk track looked like compared to a, a moo cow track yes. <laughs> to like, what is, what does elk sign look like? What's fresh elk sign look like compared to two years ago? What's, you know, how do you play the wind? What do the thermals do? Like I, had I just started killing stuff on day one, I never would have learned those very intricate details that I feel like make you, that puts you from being a hunter to a, 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 a really good hunter, a decent hunter. And, you know, I'm, I am, levels below the guys that I hunt with like I'm definitely a disadvantage to them uh, but uh I'm definitely the crutch of the group but um <laughs> I feel like I feel like you know if you if if there's listeners that they're still waiting to kill their first animal it's very cliche it's very stupid it's hard to bite the bullet in the moment and recognize it as this but you are getting so much if, if you if you if you choose to take the high road and see it as this and to see that you're learning a lot in the process, uh, it's just going to make you better as you continue to go, uh, as you continue to become a better, a uh, better hunter. But yeah, man, the, you know, the, um, the buck the, between losing that bull and I had actually that same day fired at another deer and, and had missed him. Like, I was just so dejected that whenever I finally shot that buck, I shot him 277 yards in the heart 
he ran down the hill, ran into a patch of aspens, and uh, my good friend who I was with was sort of celebrating with me. But after losing two animals, one I don't even think I hit, but the other one I knew I hit. I was like, man, I'm not celebrating anything till I get to the top of that hill and I see that buck is dead. Um, so, so yeah, it's it's a it's a process. It's a boy. It's just an overwhelming emotion whenever you get up there. You see your first animal. It's a a joy. It's a it's a relief, like in the sense of, you know, thank, thank God I'm not destined to go to my grave having had not killed anything. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's just, there's so many pieces of it. And I know that's a lot of scattered thoughts. I hope people are able to pull something from that, but, um, yeah, it was, it's, it's a spectacular feeling that I just, I can't describe it about anything else i played a lot of sports as a young kid but i've never felt like this brings out so many different emotions uh the way that this does the way that hunting does well that's why you know the the tagline for this podcast is hunting is transforming lives through primal adventure hunting has the power to transform lives yeah and until you put yourself in that type of situation or scenario or struggle or whatever you want to call it or identify it as you don't understand how life-changing and life empowering hunting can be for you and yeah and that's why i'm on a mission to to share this with everyone in the world is like the highs the lows the reflection the struggle the suck i won't use the word grind i'm not a fan of using the word grind in my vocabulary Uh, (laughs) i don't believe in grinding it out because you get you are blessed and get to have the opportunity to always be alive and to challenge yourself or even experience things in different ways and so yeah hunting is is life-changing is what it comes down to nothing challenges you as a human being as far as a experiential aspect like hunting um obviously we're not talking about being a husband or a father because because those are its own own game but when it comes to you choosing to go endeavor on something nothing is going to touch it quite like hunting no i could agree with you more i i um you know when i think about the things that i have seen being in 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 the woods like those are things i because of hunting those are things i never would have been able to see i mean bears with cubs and bucks roaming around and and bucks breeding does and bugling bulls and i mean it's just phenomenal stuff that you know a large percentage of the population will never have the opportunity to see and um i remember you know i got my archery permit just because i wanted to extend my season i wanted to be able to hunt a late archery deer hunts and stuff if i didn't tag out in a general rifle season and so i got my first archery elk tag the first year i went the first year i got you know i was within 100 yards to a bull losing his mind trying to hurt his cows and dude i was hooked i mean i just and i was convinced i remember I, you know i went hunting with the guy who had been bow hunting elk for many many years and I told him, I was like, man, if, if you, if someone experienced this, there's no way they couldn't fall in love with it. I mean, just, just to be out there and to see that and to hear that and to watch a, a bull in September be a bull in September, there's just not anything like it. And it's a, it's a, you don't want to be dramatic, but it's truly a, a kind of a life changer and trajectory, at least in terms of hobbies, yeah. you know, at the very least, but um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's people that like will go to Burning Man down in California and stuff like that. And they'll be like, dude, it was life changing. Well, you go in the woods and you experience a, a, a bull elk just screaming his head off and you'll be like, OK, yeah, you're right. There's nothing that will even touch that. Yeah. Um. So being a newer hunter and also a newer father, do and then we talked about this a little bit, but I want you to expand on this a little bit more. It is do you find yourself struggling to dedicate time one to another obviously now on this podcast we always talk about you have to identify what you want and it sounds like you already identified what you wanted and that was to be a good husband and good father do you is there ever a time where it's like there's a mistress in the relationship or there's a different calling or 
I don't, I don't know. For all the new fathers out there, for all the fathers who maybe their kids are grown and can still have an opportunity to reflect and, and you know, there's always time. Right? Yeah. If you if you are willing to, you can always journey and correct things. What it, what advice or what experiences or just insight do you have in your journey that you can share? Well, I mean, you know, in spite of me uh, wanting to be a good husband, a good father, there are some there are some truths that exist and have to happen to even go hunt, right? I mean, like sighting in your bow is a great example and practicing with your bow. It's not like you've got to be an expert marksman, but you have to have a decent shot within a certain, you know, yardage to be able to go and feel confident while you're hunting. And that takes time, right? That takes time that you've got to be outside. And it's not like you can have your one and a half year old son running around the yard while you're sighting your bow in. And your wife definitely doesn't want to sit in a lawn chair and watch you do that. So it's time away from them. There is definitely a a sort of angst, anxiousness and sense of like I'm not being a good husband and dad when I am outside sighting in my bow and I know that my son's awake. Right. It's not time that I'm with him and I work quite a bit. So that's time away from him. And then it just feels like compounded um, time that I'm not with him whenever I'm out doing these things. So that it, there is definitely that sense of, that that pool, if that makes sense. Um, so what I've I've sort of dedicated myself to is to not take any of that time from them when he's awake. Now, in Idaho, you know, in most Western states, we have the luxury of not having the sunset until what seems like 3 a.m. sometimes in the summer. So you get a ton of daylight. Um, so generally what that means for me is very, very long and tiring days, but I don't want to pull from t- available time for them. So that's what I typically do. I wait till he goes to bed and then I'll go outside and shoot my bow. And it usually means it makes for a really long day. But at the end of the day, it's the only way that I found to, you know, sort of quote unquote, get it all in. And I've really, you and I talked about this before we started recording. I really had to work on my own mindset as not seeing that as like this dreadful thing where I've got a long day ahead of me, but to sort of get my mindset around the fact of um, I'm grateful for the opportunity that I'm able to raise a son that I love to be married to a great woman to be able to go outside and sight my bow in and go do something that I love all fall. Uh, so, you know, you sort of have to reframe your, your mind work around that. It is, it's hard, dude. It is really, really challenging to have any kids who are not older and a wife. And my wife is very understanding having had, you know, been raised in a hunting family, but it definitely requires, and we talked about this earlier too, intentionality. You, when I'm home and I'm not doing something to prepare for or hunting related I am home I'm not on my phone scrolling I'm not answering emails I'm not you know texting all of creation I'm home I'm with them I'm you know I'm very focused on on them and um and even scheduling this podcast is not necessarily the easiest thing because you're very (laughs) intentional with your time that's a hundred percent true. Like, you know, you had, a, you had asked for a very reasonable, I think it was like 30 or 45 minutes later than what I, I had initially put down. And I, man, I just have a hard cutoff so I can spend time with my wife before, before I go to bed and I can be flexible. Like we could have done it on a weekend or something else like that. But, you know, again, jumping back to that weight conversation of being consistent um, I find that with everything, man, being, becoming, um, becoming the type of person that I want to be for my wife and my son or hunting or a friend or relationships, anything like that is a, is a series of very, very, very basic steps carried out every single day. Um, I have found, and if somebody else has better advice, I'm all ears because it can be exhausting, but I have found that that's the the way to be the type of person I want to be is just a series of very basic things done every single day with relentless consistency. Man. So that, that is awesome. Awesome. And for all you listeners out there, I hope you are uh, taking notes because 
not that how someone else does it is how you should do it because once again we don't yeah. should on people however we can always find inspiration and motivation from others and kind of like how you go through a dating process and you date all these different people where you find the person you're supposed to marry and you're like well i like this about them and the next person you're like i like this about them and then you kind of just piece together what it is your picture that you're looking for and then that helps create happiness and one hundred percent, and it goes back to identifying what you want, and and there's yeah. so much to be said for that. So yeah, and I think I think on, on that note, sorry, Johnny, but I think on that note, like I used to always think people, the people that had qualities about them that I wanted, that I boy, I, I wish I could be more like him in X, Y, and Z area, and I, I wish I could be more like him in X, Y, and Z area. The people that had those qualities, I thought, oh, you know, they, they just got that it factor. And I learned that that's not really it. They saw and what I, you know, I, I would see character traits or I would see things in people that I admired and that I wanted to be. And I just started doing it. Right. I mean, it kind of feels like you're faking it until you make it in the beginning. But then you realize that that's not it. You are truly just becoming the type of person you want to become through a series of steps. Yeah, and here's a thing, listeners. You all, I really want you to capture this idea. Your life is not someone else's. Stop comparing your life to someone else. Stop comparing your hunt to other people. Stop comparing your job to other people, your nutrition, your health, your lifestyle. If there's something that you want, you literally can attain it. That is the American dream. It is for you to identify what it is that you want. And I'm going to give an example here because we can pick up the best pieces of people and apply them to ourselves and then grow as a human being. But I remember being in college and my, my best buddy, Jeff Cochran, in college, I remember he, I went over to his house and he had this little thing, a comment right by his toilet. And... Just real quick, he, he sprinkled it on his toilet, cleaned it up, and I was like, like, wow, that's a really good idea. And it goes back to the nutrition thing, Kyle, is maintaining is a lot easier than recovering. If you can just kind of maintain here and there and just keep moving and plugging along, it's a lot easier than having to wait until it's just a disaster and then having to go that entire journey. And so that was one of the things that I learned from other people that, you know, every day needs to have purpose. You need to, if you don't have, you know, to my right, I have a to-do list. I also have a manifest list. Like these are the things that I am working on and these are the things that I'm going to accomplish. If you don't know what it is that you want or what you want to accomplish, it's hard to get things done, whether it's eating proper nutrition cleaning a toilet or being better at your job or accomplishing your job. So you have more free time later to spend with your family, your hunting or whatever it is. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. I mean, I love, I love this maxim that I use a lot with like uh, athletes, clients, and even myself is what gets measured gets managed. So you've got to have some sort. And that's why the, that's why the developing a plan is number one on those four things you have to have some sort of a target in mind. Otherwise you're just sort of, you know, whether it's life or nutrition or exercise or hunting or whatever, there's gotta be something you're aiming for and sort of measuring to know whether or not you're attaining the goal. Otherwise it is, it's just kind of like wildly beating the air and hoping that you get somewhere. And that's the quickest way for discouragement. It's, right. So you got to have something there. Yeah. It's so agree. funny. I just got done talking and teaching to my students about having smart goals and smarts an acronym. If you want to yeah. have a goal, have a smart goal. So it's an acronym for sm specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and you got to have a time bound aspect. Because if you just say, like for me, if I said, I want to be a millionaire, well, that is measurable, totally. Is it attainable? Yes. Is it realistic as a teacher? No. So you have to identify like these different avenues, like what is it that you want? And, and then adjust your life to achieve these things. You know, I love how you're saying you have, to, if it's not measurable, then you are literally just like 
swinging in the air. Like, what's the point of point of life is there's many points of life and everyone can come to their own conclusion. However, I was raised that either you are getting better or you are getting worse. And for you to go one direction or the other, because the minute that you're not trying to get better, everyone around you has the ability to get ahead of you, therefore putting you behind. And, and I think about that a lot and I'm like, okay. And this is where I do want to, uh, put an asterisk and say, I do not believe in grinding because you get to live the life that you want. So if you don't want to put in the effort towards specific things, that's okay. And that is all right. Yeah. Um, but once again, if it is something that you want, then you have to work towards it. Yeah, 100%. I love, 100% agree with you. I love it. Kyle, kind of wrapping this this uh, episode up in, in conclusion a little bit, how has hunting made you a better husband, a better father, and a better worker? Oh, geez, man. That's a really good question. Um, I, I, I'll i say this seems like a little bit of a cop-out, but I, I do believe that it's true. I think – the opportunity to go out and be with guys that I'm close with. I mean, we, we do far more than just hunt together. They're just good friends of mine, but to be able to go out and experience that sort of, and I hate a lot of these cliche terms, but sort of that primal adventure of like living outside for a week and, you know, sort of subsisting just on the stuff that we get and do and bring in there's horses and mules and involved and it's just a great time i do think that that time away sort of resets me and allows me to come home with a clear head um so i appreciate that obviously that obviously anything that does that it's going to make you a better husband when you come home and you're thinking more clearly and obviously time in the woods geez louise you got so much downtime and again it's all with what you do with it but if you're able to process a lot and think which i do and um, just helps me to come home better that way. And I think too, like there's something inside of me that makes me a more confident dad and husband in that I know I'm able to go out and bring meat home for our family. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that that helps me, whether my son or wife could care less about it, where I mean, we could go to the store and get a chicken breast for a dollar ninety nine all day long and still have meat. But to know that I'm able to go out and provide that for them gives me a confidence about being a husband and a dad that, to me, is important to have. Right. So, yeah, I would say that those those two things for sure. But um, being a, a better worker, you know, whenever we go out, we especially for like a longer elk season, we'll take some pack animals and we'll go we'll go fairly deep into the backcountry and obviously they're carrying a lot of, of love, a lot of the weight so that certainly isn't anything to be impressed by when i say deep but uh, we'll go pretty far back there and i think one thing and this was already instilled in me at a young age and i've always been a firm believer of it but it's a good it's a good way to drive it home on at least once a year is it's really there's so much to do when you've got pack animals and keeping up with a good camp and trying to hunt and cook and all of that when you're back there that long, um, being a valuable part of the team rather than being a, a dead weight, right? So making sure that you're taking the horses to water, you're helping feed, you're going to get water, you're volunteering for the worst jobs that nobody else feels like doing in camp. Um, <laughs> right, so not not like... And, and not just being um, like you're you're proactively going to volunteer for those. Right. I mean, those those are the type of good things that that like I said, I'm the weakest link of the team. So I need to be going to do those things because I'm indebted to these guys for teaching me the tools of the trade. And I, and I think that. Rec recognizing that is important. And uh, at least for me and my personal convictions, I think it's important that I go and do those things. Um, and just being a valuable part of the team rather than dead weight and sort of letting them do that stuff for me. And um, yeah, I think that that's important. So I think that's beautiful. There's a quote that I always refer to that was something that the first person I ever heard it from was my brother, Lucas Mack. 
And if you guys have ever, uh, if you never heard of my my brother before, he has a, his own podcast called The Golden Rule Revolution, treating people like people and nothing less. And so his podcast, he always talks about internal reflection leads to outward correction. And it's really interesting to hear you say, like, you reflected upon, I'm the weakest link, so I need to make sure I contribute. When you take the opportunity to think about how you are and how you show up in the world, it makes you more powerful in everything that you do. And it's not, you're not just, excuse my language, the, the camp bitch or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Like, that's not you. You are powerful in how you are and what you do because when you lead with love and you lead with intention, you change the world. And whether you think you change the world, you change the world in your community, you change the world in your little hunting group, you change the world in your family, in your job, and you literally have the power to create whatever life and, and environment that you want. I think that's super yeah. awesome. And, and man, just be honest with yourself. If you're the weakest, if you are the, if you've been hunting the least amount of time and you recognize these guys have exponentially more knowledge and skill set than you, that's okay. Like in the world of Instagram and Facebook, where everybody's trying to flex their uh, either, uh, you know, their, their, the guns of their minds, like, oh, I'm smarter than you or, uh, you know, look how much bigger my buck was this year than you're in the world where everybody's trying to flex on everyone. It's all right. If you're not the best guy in camp, man, just be grateful you're there and be honest with yourself because the more that you sit there and you sort of process in your head, oh, I'm not as good as them. I haven't been hunting as long as them. I'll never shoot a six point, you know, like the, 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 the longer it's going to be until you're able to just enjoy life and enjoy the process. I, I read a, a great book recently. And one of the, one of the things that the guy in there was talking about, he was like, you know, if anybody's, I don't know what your listenership is in terms of reading the Bible, but there's a, there's a, uh, there's a, a story in the Bible called the prodigal son where the lost son comes back and the brother sort of gets jealous. And the point of this book and the, and the point of this guy's statement was one of the brother's biggest issues was he wanted to be celebrated. One of the best things you can do in life is celebrate other people for accomplishing what you want and what you have, even if you don't feel like it, man. And it's so freeing. And so if you're the guy in the camp who hasn't shot a bull and the rest of the group has, and you're discouraged, who can celebrate them? Absolutely. Like That's just one of the most freeing things on the planet is to let these stop stop holding expectations of other people over your head. And this is a complete tangent now, but um, celebrate others whenever you're the person that wants to be celebrated. It's okay if you're not the best, at least you're there. Yeah. And you know what? It's Tangents are awesome because they bring up amazing <laughs> points. I don't know if you listeners are aware that we have a president uh, in the past called Teddy Roosevelt. He, he was the father of conservation and ushered in national parks and all this. Well, one of his most amazing quotes, which, by the way, if you've never read uh, The Man in the Arena, I highly recommend all you listeners go look up The Man in the Arena because I have that quote in my living room. Um, however, this quote is different. And Teddy Roosevelt said, comparison is the thief of joy. Comparison is the thief of joy. The minute that you start to compare yourself to other people or other things, it steals your joy. And hundred yeah, percent. And if you want to live a joyful life, it, because like, and I'm not just posing that question. Like, I literally hate not being happy. <laughs> I hate not being filled with joy. I hate not being like the light of the world that I know that I'm supposed to be and I know I can be and I know that I am stop comparing yourself to others yeah. it's and that is you know the pros and cons of social media like the pros of it it brought Kyle you and I together the cons of it is like oh that guy's getting out more than me or that guy shot a bigger animal than me or I wish I could do that or I wish I, 
you know, you start living this, I wish, I wish, I wish, I want, I want. Comparison is the thief of joy. And if you want to live a, a life of joy and fulfillment, then stop comparing yourself to others. Stop judging others. Stop judging yourself and start identifying how you want to show up in this world and you're going to live a more fulfilling life. You might as well sign off with that oh, one, man. man. That was great. <laughs> That's excellent well, advice. Well, there's a reason why this is called the Soulful Hunter Podcast. So, <laughs> hey, Kyle, like real quick before we wrap up, um, you did an article, and I want to make sure every all the listeners get a chance to read this. If you go to wabackcountry.com or soulfulhunter.com and you go to our menu tab and go to articles and go down to wellness and nutrition, Kyle contributed to an uh, article called Nutrition in the Backcountry, How to Eat for Success. Totally recommend you all go in and checking that out. But also, Kyle, how do listeners get involved with Valley to Peak Nutrition? How do they get connected with you and all that? That's a good question. Yeah, so everything online is um, under V2P Nutrition with uh, the two being the actual digit. So it's V2P Nutrition. There's v2pnutrition.com. That's the Instagram handle or tag as well. It's the Facebook group. Uh, there's a few Facebook groups on there now, most of which are completely free to be a part of. We're doing a um, project right now called Operation Net Zero, which is kind of a challenge for folks to leave the holiday season the same way that they entered it. <laughs> uh, it's a hundred dollar Amazon gift card up for grabs there. And um you're welcome to be a part of that. And yeah, so love to talk with you or answer any questions you've got. I love, 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 love talking to people. So yeah, man, nutrition can be a confusing topic. It does not need to be. So if you've got questions, I'd love to help answer them. And Kyle is an amazing resource and don't feel overwhelmed or fearful if you think that you have like this inkling in the back of your mind, like, ah, I should probably get my nutrition under, under wraps, reach out to Kyle. He's a wealth of knowledge resource. Um, and he's got some amazing things going on. So make sure to head over to V2P dot or V2P nutrition.com. Check him out on Instagram and Facebook and all that. So Kyle, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Dude, it's been my pleasure. I appreciate you having me. <laughs> oh, it's always a great one. Everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. As always, just enjoy life. Live it to the most. Live the moment. Enjoy it. Uh, also, for those of you who are still hunting, don't forget to bring an American flag with you out into the wild and use the hashtag Patriots in the Wild and take a picture of you and your flag and celebrate our patriotism uh, for, this, for this country and all the great things that it's done for you and what it's doing for others. And as always, everybody... Stay soulful. If you enjoyed today's podcast, I'd love it if you could go ahead and give this a rating as well as subscribe. Also, you can check us out on Instagram under the Soulful Hunter podcast. Make sure to tag us in pictures and posts and use the hashtag Soulful Hunter. To find out more about the Soulful Hunter podcast, go to soulfulhunter.com and be sure to follow the podcast as we are going to be bringing you a lot of great information, insight, and changing lives through Primal Adventure. I look forward to connecting with you on the next episode. Stay tuned and stay soulful.